Big Show, the business podcast that's got your back every step of the way of building your business with our daily 10-minute business lessons for the real world. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. If you haven't checked out our free guides, go ahead and check them out at 100mba.net. We got guides on how to create an online course, how to create a business plan, how to create a great website for your business. And they're all free for you to download. Go ahead and check those out. In today's episode, you will learn the five mistakes to avoid when selling physical goods. If you sell physical products in a brick and mortar traditional store or online, this episode is a must listen. You have to make sure you take notes on today's lesson. I'm going to give you some really, really important pointers, things that you probably haven't thought of when you're selling physical products. And these strategies are not theoretical. They're downright practical and they're things I've used in my own businesses. So let's get into it. What are the five mistakes to avoid when selling physical goods or physical products? Let's get down to business. Today's episode of the $100 MBA show is sponsored by FreshBooks, the easy to use invoicing solution designed for small business owners. FreshBooks makes it ridiculously easy to create and send invoices, organize your expenses, and track your time. And right now, you could try FreshBooks for free. For 30 days, just go to freshbooks.com slash MBA. That's freshbooks.com slash MBA. For those who don't know my business history, I've sold physical products in the past. I've sold things from rare Air Jordan sneakers to used cars, and I've done it all online. But one of the large businesses I've had in the past is my own clothing line. It was a clothing line that was called Zenhome, my last name, and it was quite a successful business. I decided to get out of that business to start other ventures, but in that process, in that three and a half years, I learned a lot of great strategies through my experiences. We had over 20 employees and three major locations around the world, and it was really interesting to see how retail and selling physical goods is really different from any other kind of business. So in today's lesson, I'm going to give you some great strategies and some tips to avoid five major mistakes that people do when they sell physical goods. You want to avoid these at all costs, and they're the most common mistakes and mistakes that really cause businesses to not really thrive. Let me get into mistake number one, not having enough visuals. This is a very common mistake, whether you're selling your products on a website or you're just displaying your products for people to check out when they go to your store. Many people don't do their products and their business justice because they don't put up enough visuals of their products. They put maybe one picture, two picture, and the pictures are not really dynamic. You want to put as many pictures as possible. When we were selling men's clothing in our clothing line, we had a minimum of six images per product. And each image was dynamic. I can zoom in and zoom out to see detail of each shot. Remember that you need to make a case or build a case for your product. You need to give enough information for people to make a decision and say, hey, I want to buy this. This makes perfect sense. I like this a lot. I've seen enough for me to say, yes, this is what I want. When you have one or two pictures of your products, it doesn't really inspire confidence. The other thing when it comes to visuals, they need to be high quality visuals. There's no excuse for this anymore. When I was doing this back in the day, you couldn't use your camera phone. The camera phones weren't that sophisticated. Now they're amazing. But even with that, you may want to invest into having some professionally shot photos. I made sure to professionally shoot every single product. And because we were selling clothing, we had the shirts modeled. People were wearing the actual shirts. And some shots were actually with the shirt by itself. So the point here is that pay attention to your visuals on your site. Make sure that you have enough great visuals to sell your product. Your product should sell itself. And of course, all the descriptions, all the things that come into play into describing your product will really help as well. All right, let's talk about mistake number two. Now, mistake number two is not telling your story. Many people, when they sell physical goods, they think, hey, no, I'm selling cell phone cases. I'm selling clothing. I'm selling you know, gadgets. I'm not really selling a story. You need to sell a story regardless of what business you're in. And I realized this very quickly in clothing. Even though I was selling fashion, I need to talk about why I was selling fashion. I need to get people on board with my kind of brand. I needed to give them more of a reason than just the clothes to buy. So I invested in getting a professional videographer to shoot my story, to have a little video telling my story. So don't neglect this. Make sure that you tell your story. Why did you get into this business in the first place? Why should people buy from you? What are you all about? What do you stand for? All right, mistake number three. Avoid this at all costs. Not doing any content marketing. A lot of people when they start physical businesses or businesses that sell physical goods, 
they think that they're not in the content marketing business. They think that, hey, I'm not selling information, so I shouldn't give out information. Nothing could be further from the truth. One of the competitive advantages that we had is that we had a blog that had great articles on men's clothing and men's fashion. If you could help people with the way they use your product, they're gonna wanna buy from you. Whether that's a blog or videos or a podcast, all of these can contribute to your content marketing strategy. I know I referred him before, but he's a great example. Antonio Centeno from Real Men Real Style. He has some really, really informative videos on YouTube and he has lots of them. It's his body of work and it's a great form of content marketing, even though he sells physical goods as well as informational goods. See, with content marketing, it helps spread the word. It also makes you an authority in the market. You're the person that's providing information. You're the expert. Automatically, people are going to correlate that expertise with your products. You have a high level of expertise, your products must be high level. And lastly, content marketing helps lower returns. That was one of the biggest benefits I saw in my business when I started content marketing my physical goods. It helps inform your customers on which products to buy. So when they do buy, they're making the right choice and it lowers the return rate because people buy the right thing or the right product the first time around. This is particularly important, especially if you're going to be selling things that have sizes, whether that's clothing or shoes or whatever. You make sure people are picking the right size from the get-go through your content marketing. And this could be a form of a blog post or a guide or even a video. All right, so the first three mistakes to avoid is not having enough visuals, not telling your story, and not doing enough content marketing. The fourth mistake, not having ambassadors. This is something a lot of people do not utilize in their market. Whatever you're selling, whether it's gadgets, whether it's accessories, whether it's clothing, you should find leaders in your market that people look up to and provide them with your products so they can be ambassadors. So for example, there's a new gesture control armband called Mayo. And what this thing does, is like an armband that you put on your forearm and you can use some symbols with your fingers to control your slides in a presentation. Sounds like something from the future, right? But it's real. And what Mayo does is that it hands its products to people that are big in their market. So big public speakers, they send it to them for free. They say, hey, I want you to try this out and use it in your next speech. And what happens is that people start asking that big public figure, what are you using on your arm there? And they say, oh, that's how I move through my slides. It's called Mayo. And Mayo has an ambassador, somebody that goes ahead and markets for them because they have a platform. Now, if their product is great, then the ambassadors will be happy to use it on a consistent basis. That's the kicker there. You got to make sure your product is great. So if you have any physical goods like clothing, shoes, or even anything that is used in public, like an electronic device, then ask ambassadors in your market, people that have a platform, to use it for you. One, it gives you some real good feedback on how to improve your product, and two, it gets its exposure. And by the way, you could do this with non-physical goods, software, courses. You can ask people that are leaders in your market, to, hey, here's a free spin, here's free access. Give me your feedback. If you love it, I would love a testimonial from you. It'd be great for you to endorse it, and at the same time, you get a free copy. Guys, I got more on today's topic. I got one more mistake to avoid when selling physical goods. But before that, I gotta give love to today's sponsor, Vistaprint. If you're starting a business and you're starting to talk about your business with other people, one of the best things you can have on hand is a great looking business card. And we've been using Vistaprint for our business cards for years now. In fact, you can check out our business cards that we made with Vistaprint in today's show notes or at our resource page at 100mba.net slash resources. And right now, Vistaprint.com is giving an exclusive offer to listeners of The $100 MBA Show. You can get 500 business cards for just $9.99 when you enter my promo code MBA. That's 500 custom-made business cards for the price of a large coffee. That's incredible. Best of all, Vistaprint makes it super easy for you to customize your business card with text, colors, backside, your own logo. You could do it all within Vistaprint. You can even upgrade to a brilliant finish or my personal favorite, the matte finish. Vistaprint's customer service is top notch. I've been using them for years and they make sure that your order is perfect every single time. We love Vistaprint and we want you to try them out. So go to vistaprint.com and enter coupon code MBA to get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. It's a 50% savings off the site price. It's incredible. This is an exciting offer for a great product. 500 custom business cards for just $9.99 when you use coupon code MBA at vistaprint.com. The fifth mistake you should avoid when selling physical goods or products is not always innovating. Often we come out with great products and they're selling well and we feel good about that, but then we just sit on our laurels. 
this is something I learned very quickly that you have to constantly innovate in your business. You have to constantly bring out new things. And this is particularly important in physical products. People are looking for the latest model, the latest thing. And you got to make sure that you answer the call. Yes, they're going to have products in your product line that will never change. They're classics. It's what your customers want. But a lot of your product line is going to constantly evolve. You're trying new things. You're seeing what's going to work, what's not. And that's how you come up with a great idea is you keep trying new things. So always think of ways that you can improve your products, your offerings, the things that you're selling. Evaluate what's going on. Listen to feedback from your audience. If you're on Amazon, read your reviews. Take them to heart. See what you can change and see what you can add and innovate in your business. Out of all these things, this is the one area in my business I learned the hard way. I really um, had some solid products in my product line that were selling very well, but I wasn't innovating, so things started to die down. So I had to start innovating, changing things, adding new models, different fashions, different colors, different accessories, and that really helped. I had my tried and true products that really sold no matter what, but I would say about 50 to 60% of the stuff I had kept on changing so I can keep on trying new and innovative things that my market and my audience would like. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, we'd love to hear it in an iTunes rating and review. Drop us an iTunes rating and review. If you're on your iPhone, just click on the cover art. You'll see a link that says give us a rating and review. If you're on another device or a browser, just go to 100mba.net slash show. Here's a great review from JMB Spirit. Very nice job, worthy of five stars. No kidding, this is a great podcast, professionally done. The bottom line is, is that it's upfront, great information right in your lap without the unnecessary fluff. Yet somehow entertaining and engaging too. Something I look forward to listening to because the info helps me in a real way and because it's uplifting and honest at the same time. Great job, $100 MBA crew. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much for that awesome review. It means so much. And thank you all for your support. All right, guys, I want to leave you with this. Selling physical products, retail, is one of the hardest areas of business to be in. You got to be on your toes. You got to be evolving. You got to be connected with your audience constantly. But it can be very rewarding. It has its own sweetness when you see somebody using your products in real life. So if you're in a physical product business, don't be discouraged. It takes time, but when it's successful, it's sustainable. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I hope to see you in tomorrow's episode. Tomorrow's episode, we discuss if everyone loves you, you're doing it wrong. We get into it tomorrow. I'll see you then. Take care.